this study was done, we looked at the Pittsburgh subjects. And at that time in the late 80s when it was recruited, the Hispanic population in Pittsburgh uh, was very small. And I don't think we had any recruited into the study. Well, if we repeat it here in California, we have men. I Eat right for your type. For your blood type. Uh, do you know? Do you know it? I don't actually know about that. Yeah, no, I know it really well, and I'm blood type A, and I hate the diet he recommended for me. But I, I think th there are little pearls of wisdom in it. So, for example, he talked about people who have blood type O, which is the most common do better on a higher protein, lower carbohydrate diet. Blood type O also tends to be a higher ADD group. We actually did a study with that. And clearly, they do better on a higher protein, lower carbohydrate diet. So there's just not good science behind that book. So I, I wouldn't use that as a, a guide. Now, we have a couple of questions on the people who are watching on the web. So Janet asks, I've had insomnia for three years, for which I've been given Xanax. Will Xanax damage my brain more than being awake all night and sleeping only for three or four hours? Which is worse, Xanax or a lack of sleep? They're both bad. You know, when I trained at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, DC, Xanax just came out onto the market in the early 80s. And so we were taught to use a lot of it. And so sometimes we'd use like 10 milligrams, which you know is, is, is a hammer dose. Um, but when I first started doing scans in 1991, I was using it because I was trained to. Uh, and I saw that the scans often look like alcoholic scans. That what Xanax does is it raises a neurotransmitter called GABA in the brain and calms things down. I try to do everything else but give people Xanax. So um, now, obviously, getting three hours of sleep a night is a bad, but it's not take Xanax or don't sleep. There's like 15 other interventions to help you sleep. And my favorite, when I was an intern at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center, I took a month elective in hypnosis when I was a medical student. And I loved it. So all my, my patients who said, will you? give me a sleeping pill, I would say, yes. But can I hypnotize you first? And if you don't need it, don't take it. And so and all of my patients went, well, of course. I mean, they really liked that idea. My first three professional papers were on hypnosis in a general psychiatric hospital, or general medical hospital. My first patient, his name was Fritz Perls. He was a World War II hero. He had bad Parkinson's disease. You know, his hands, were, and he couldn't sleep. He um, was very uncomfortable. Will you give me a sleeping pill? I said, sure, but can I let, hypnotize you? And when I put him in a trance, before he went to sleep, his tremor went away. And I'm like, no way, that's so cool. And the next morning on rounds, now I'm on the neurology service. And you know, most neurologists think psychiatric interns are sort of a pain in the butt. Um, <laughs> they had no use for us at all. And so I'm like so excited because I get that way. And I'm telling Dr. Jabari, my attending, on rounds in the morning. And he looked at me like stupid psychiatric interns. Why do I have to put up with these people? And I'm like, no, watch. And so in front of like eight of my other interns and residents, I hypnotize Fritz, his tremor goes away. Now all of a sudden, Jabari, this very sort of stead, stayed uh, neurologist, now all of a sudden he's like, we can video that. We can do an EEG while he does that. We could publish. And we got that paper right. published. So hypnosis could be a very powerful alternative. And if that doesn't work, we make something called restful sleep that we actually call the hammer. Here, it's got five things to help settle down your brain so you can sleep. If that doesn't work, I don't use Xanax. I might use Trazodone, 
which is an antidepressant that's a terrible antidepressant, but a really good sleeping pill. Or I might use Neurontin, or I even use, oh, use anything but Xanax. All right, one more question. How much, you, maybe you can answer this, how much omega-3 do you get when you eat fish once a week, like salmon? So when you eat salmon, you know, the, 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 the answer is it, it depends because you have to look at the quality of the salmon, whether it's organic or farm-raised. And it's hard to convert that to an actual milligram uh, dose. But most of the common fish oil supplements you can take, like the ones that Daniel has, will cover more than a weekly uh, dose of fish consumption. So I think that you know, if you take the supplements, you can also get a similar omega-3 level but like Daniel and I were talking about before, make sure that it's coming from a manufacturer that does that because the vast majority of omega-3 supplements out there don't give you the omega-3s you need. I okay. It's not a good idea. So the question is, you take flaxseed for your omega-3. And the reason it's not a good idea is Flax seeds are very high in ALA, a form of omega-3, but not in DHA or in EPA, the two that the brain uses. You need to take 10 times the level of flaxseed oil in order to get this equivalent level of fish oil. And so flax seeds can be good for many things but they're not really good to raise the omega-3 level in your brain. And it's one of the reasons that vegetarians have a harder time getting high omega-3 levels. Now, it's not impossible. There's a company called Martech that makes omega-3s from algae. So if you have a psychological conflict with eating meat or you're trying to be a vegetarian for the health reasons, um, that would be one way to get your omega-3. Can you comment about steroids? You, you know, the issue with krill, and, and I don't know your thoughts, but there's just no good science with it yet. There's a lot of marketing hype with it, but most of the studies are done with fish oil and looking at the ratios of omega-3, uh, of EPA and DHA. And, and what's really interesting is EPA more based fish oils, higher EPA, better for ADD and depression. 